Hello there, I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement live data into an existing Android project step by step. Let's get started. Live data is a lifecycle aware, observable data holder class. This means that you can have your UI components observe objects that implement live data so they can be notified when a change occurs and update the UI accordingly. And because live data is lifecycle aware, if an observer becomes inactive, Live Data knows not to send updates to that observer until they become active again. This is similar to how you sign up for notifications for when your favorite video game is about to be released. That way you don't have to go to the store to check for yourself. You can just be notified when the game arrives. Today we're adding Live Data to our Cupcake Store app from our Android View Model video. There's a link in the description if you'd like to check that out. For this tutorial, I've added one small additional feature, which is the ability to track the number of cupcakes we have in stock. The app starts with five cupcakes, and as you add them to the cart, the stock counter decreases depending on the number of cupcakes added to the cart. Additionally, if you try to buy more cupcakes than what we have available, you'll see a toast message notifying you of the current stock. And of course, to prevent us from adding more cupcakes than what we have in stock, the add button is disabled when the stock amount reaches zero. In order to implement live data in our project, we first need to add its dependency to our app's build.gradle file. And of course, don't forget to sync your project. Next, we'll convert some of our properties in our product detail view model to use live data. One problem with our current setup is that we're directly exposing our view model properties to the fragment, which potentially allows the fragment to change their values. To fix this, we'll replace each of these with two properties. One private backing property of type mutable live data, which we'll name with the underscore character. Mutable live data means that even though we can declare it as a val, our view model can update its value later on. And we'll set its initial value to five because we start with five cupcakes in stock and it's private, so only our view model will be able to access and update it. We'll also add a public live data property and set its value to be updated by the backing property we just created. This is a read-only property that our fragment will have access to, but won't be able to change its value. Also note that because I'm providing an initial value to our mutable live data, we can omit the explicit type declaration. We'll now convert the remaining view model properties in the same way. We also need to modify our view model to update the backing properties within its methods, the ones that start with the underscore. And in order to update a property that is of type mutable live data, we need to access its value property. Additionally, since mutable live data types can be null, we need to also add a let scope function to ensure that we're accessing its value when it's not null. And for these last two methods, we can use a save call operator, the question mark, followed by a dot plus or dot minus to complete our operation. Rather than having the product detail fragment constantly checking the view model for new values, and updating its UI components needlessly, we'll have the fragment observe the properties from the view model and subscribe to the changes from those properties so that it can react accordingly. We can do this by accessing the view model's public properties, such as the order total live data we just created, and calling the observe method for those properties. Then we pass the view lifecycle owner, and inside of our brackets, we can now do something with any updates from our order total. We can use the with scope function and access the checkout button using our binding object. And then we can update its text and set its on click listener. And now since we're dynamically updating our checkout button above, we can safely delete the other lines that update its text value, as well as the ones that are setting the on click listener below. Next, we'll add a private local variable to hold our remaining stock amount 
so that we can pass it to our stock count message text view as well as our toast message later. We'll then observe the remaining stock live data from our view model and we'll move our code to update the text of the stock count message with the new values from our live data property. Here we'll also update our stock left variable with new values from our live data. And we can also move our code that disables the add to cart button to be within our observer block. We will also observe the insufficient stock live data property and move our code to display our toast message when its value changes to be true. And we will swap these calls to the view model to use our local stock left variable. However, because we're dynamically updating the stock count message above with live data, there's no longer a need for us to also update it within this else block. And lastly, we can remove this add button parameter since it's not being used anymore. And as we run our app, we see there are no visual changes, but that our code is more efficient and less prone to errors. Well, there you have it. In just a few steps, you can convert your view model to use live data and have your view components observe and react to its changes. If you found this video useful, you might also enjoy my previous video on how to implement a view model and view model factory. Thanks for watching.